I have uh, no illusions about being able to address this topic properly, but I thought it uh, needed to be addressed anyway. And there are a lot of things that feminism has brought about, uh, virtually all negative, and there are a lot of things that what appears to be this inherently selfish behavior of women uh, has brought about, and that too appears negative, and combined they've really wrought a trail of destruction. I can't think of any other phrase to describe it. But uh, what I'd like to talk about here is the question of ethics, ethical behavior, the golden rule, as it, as it pertains to men and particularly in men's relationship to womankind and what have you. Now, based on the science we have available, we're essentially hardwired to possess a sense of morality, a sense of, well, the golden rule essentially, the desire to alleviate suffering. Yes, we also present, <laughs> due to biological evolution, a sense of cruelty as well. Um, and the vast majority of ha have both of us have both of these faculties. I dare say, most of us are more inclined towards kindness than we are to cruelty. There are some exceptions, but some of these individuals usually literally have something wrong with their brains. Um, and what I'd like to address in this video is a phenomenon I've seen it myself and observed in others, in other men, essentially a hardening of their. Hard, it's really hard to describe, it's a very difficult topic, uh, of, not of their moral character, but a, a hardening in terms of their willingness to allocate uh, their moral resources, as it were, to people, specifically women. And I need to qualify that and explain that a bit. Well, let me put it this way. Um, women are as has been mentioned many, many times, very often, consummate manipulators. And the fact is that so much of what women do comes down to deception. And in particular, their relations to men and how they deal with us revolves around deception, lies, manipulation. We also see, or we have seen, uh, false charges of rape and things along those lines. And the consequence of this is not a destruction of our innate moral character as men, but certainly a hardening, a hardening and a, 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 a growing sense of unwillingness to even consider the possibility of suffering in women. Um, I'm not going to lie about that. Let me further qualify that before you jump the gun. What I'm trying to say here is that there are, it appears few and far between, but there are legitimate cases of suffering in other human beings, in particular in the case of women. And what feminism and women's behavior in general uh, have done is harden us to the point where we are simply not and this is also the appropriate reaction. This is their, this is their, these were their actions and the consequences brought of their actions, brought about by their actions, to allocate our moral resources uh, towards legitimate, the rare legitimate cases of suffering as they might occur in female kind. Maybe there happens to be a female that has legitimately suffered. Um, it's not that I don't feel, com I would not feel compassion towards that individual the fact is, you don't know these days what, which, wom which woman is lying, who's telling the truth, who's not. Uh, it just seems there's just so much fabrication. And this hardening of, I suppose, which could be seen as a gullible sense of morality, I'm not saying, I don't necessarily want to subscribe to that notion, has been brought about by feminism uh, and women's lies and deception. Because the fact is that it's very hard to distinguish, even in minor cases of, su of suffering, when a woman is legitimately suffering or not. I can't think of the amount of times my ex cried crocodile tears and I 
sucker that I was fell for it. Um, of course, weeping in a particular manner is a not so subtle means of manipulation of men. We re this is just one example. We, we react to it. We tend to show compassion and understanding. We relent in whatever we might be doing. And consequently, we end up manipulated. This, uh, in, in, in part, explains uh, our position, which appears to many to be rigid. I don't like that term. I think we, we are staunchly uh, standing there with our feet in the ground. Uh, we have a sense of solidity. I wouldn't call it rigid. And the reason being, as I'm explaining now, is because our moral compass, whilst not overtly affected, has been affected to the point where, uh, you know, we, we just don't know what we're dealing with. The enemy, which unfortunately is unfortunate, the enemy, which seems to be the vast majority of female kind, has no honor. You know, it's only duplicity. How are we to show compassion for legitimate cases of suffering, for real pain, as it occasionally occurs in female kind, if the vast majority of female kind, of woman kind, engages in routine deception, manipulation, and feign pain and suffering, this is a this might not be an interesting question. You know, I, this is really is my own, one of my other pet peeves that I think about quite often. That. I try to be an ethical person. I try to help people if I can. Um, but I've been suckered into, uh, in the past, so often into believing a person, a female, was suffering when she was in fact not. I mean, it took me a while to realize the female crocodile tears are really just a means of manipulation. There are so many. You know, nagging, for example, is another one. And this hardening has occurred in me, and I've seen it occur in a, a good deal of my friends as well. At some point in time, it has to occur. Uh, what did GW famously say? You can fool me twice, and then, well, I don't remember the rest, but you can't. You can only pull the wool over someone's uh, eyes so often. And I think this is what happens. The irony is, as well, is that. The feminists who claim they're liberating women and doing all their good work for women, and the vast majority of females who perpetrate this sort of behavior, that is the deceptive, manipulative, uh, cloak and dagger behavior, they're actually ruining it for ruining it for women who actually have suffered, who are in, in cases of legitimate um, need that do in fact warrant legitimate moral attention. What happens to them? They Well, they fall by the wayside. And that's not the fault of men, or men who have been hardened, or who decided to really withdraw their, their general, their support. Um, that, that is wholly the fault of the feminists and the women who have created this toxic atmosphere. That is their fault. And here we stand, entrenched in our position, and that's not going to change. Um, it cannot change. As long as we have grasped the nature of the female and seen what has happened uh, to society at large, um, any position where we were to far more willingly allocate our moral resources uh, could endanger us all, both as individuals and as a group. And we've seen it happen over and over again. When we show compassion, kindness, and mind you, by compassion and kindness, I don't mean buying your, your female partner dinner or lavishing her with gifts. I don't mean any of that. I mean the biological innate reaction, moral reaction, the desire to alleviate suffering, to make sure another person is okay. Um, when seeing that suffering, the problem is you can't identify it anymore. Um, if 
I mean, the false rape charges are a great example of this. How do you know the woman's telling the truth? Um, you just don't know. And since women see men merely as a utility, as a resource to get things done, to affect her will, as a tool, it's also hard to know when, if and when a female is using her manipulative powers through the pretense of pain and suffering to have a man uh, execute her will. I'd venture to guess it's probably impossible to say. Suffice to say, what I've said before uh, stands, remains, uh, the default position, that of mistrust. Um, better to be safe than sorry. And, and once again, we come back to the position of this hardening. Um, that we become, rightly so, reluctant to display kindness um, because we don't know what we're dealing with. We simply do not, cannot identify legitimate cases of suffering, of, of, of pain, of, 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 of people, specifically women, in genuine need. All too often, it's simply not the case, and sometimes that's very overt, just total BS, and sometimes it's not, but we have been put in this position, and it actually is the only tenable, only uh, reasonable position to be in, given the circumstances, in my humble opinion. We can't, much as we cannot, you know, uh, the old toothpaste out of the tube uh, saying, well, much as we cannot get the toothpaste back in the tube, uh, we, you know, we cannot you know, swallow the blue pill again. Although, famously in The Matrix, I don't remember a specific name. It's been a while since I've seen the film. The one character, the traitor, he wants to take the blue pill again and just forget everything. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Sometimes that is a tempting notion, but that's not even a possibility, and there's no going back. So all the knowledge that we possess about what we're up against in, in, in our position in the world, not even society in the world throughout the ages, essentially is cheap slave labor with no inherent value beyond what we can do for others, be it uh, to be sent off to die in a war against other men that we've that never done anything to us, or to simply uh, live your life out, live your life out as a worker drone, uh, performing deeds for a faceless society that doesn't give a shit, two shits, or a rat's ass about your well-being. Um, yeah, we can't go back to not seeing that. And the con one of the consequences of that, once again, is this hardening that we have withdrawn our support and our desire to support, um, simply because we don't know what we don't with the enemy out there, we don't even know what we're dealing with. Um, it's just impossible to tell. We've not lost our morality in any sense, but we certainly, women, <laughs> a few women out there who are actually legitimately suffering, uh, as more and more men in the world and in society, more and more men you encounter, withdraw and have become morally hardened as it were and you lose their empathy and their sympathy and their support you don't need to look to the men <laughs> look to your fellow women look to the feminists they've created this toxic atmosphere they've created this toxic atmosphere um, you know full disclosure is appropriate Given what I think uh, is almost certainly true about female nature, it really female nature really, to a certain extent, in terms of manipulation, deception, verges on the demonic, in terms of their behavior, and there are certainly degrees of this, but I have seen the demonic. I've experienced it. I've also experienced uh, less than demonic, although never angelic. Um, so for me, the, and to me, it's wholly warranted this sort of uh, position. Um, so, but this has been a, uh, a consequence 
of the situation we're in and with the war that's been uh, waged against us. And those of us who've been woke, who've woken up, um, much as the uh, soldier who wakes who wakes up one day realizing that he's been you know sent to his own death for no particular particularly good reason, for the sake of a country that uh, doesn't care about him, for to kill other men that he's never met, uh, he might wake up as well in a particular situation. We've woken up, and here we are, surrounded by this misandry. And with this misandry, the only position you can take regarding women is, in terms of trust, is mistrust. And in terms of a willingness to allocate your moral resources and your moral uh, consciousness, um, the only position you can take on that is to withdraw it, unfortunately. Um, and that's not our fault. It really is a natural and logical, reasonable reaction to an atmosphere, a societal atmosphere, an interpersonal atmosphere, uh, a level of in the individual man and woman has become so toxic and so full of deception. It's always been full of deception, I imagine, but the fact that we're aware of that, combined with the toxicity that's, that feminism has, has produced on a societal scale, that this is where we are, and there is no going back. Um, and it's... Uh, you're not going to find too much uh, compassion anymore from our side, rightly so. The irony, of course, is uh, feminists don't give a shit about anyone. I, I don't even, they certainly don't care about men. I, I highly doubt that they care about uh, their fellow women. You know, you're, in fact, if you are a woman, on a final note, if you are a woman who has legitimately suffered, <coughs> Feminists, in my opinion, would be much more likely to make propagandistic use of your suffering as a means towards an end, political end probably, or a means of manipulation, wide-scale manipulation, than they would actually be concerned with your suffering and your pain as a female. So, this goes to show that feminism is not on the side of females. Um, so, in many ways, feminism um, is the epitome of female nature. Female nature being self-serving, deceptive, uh, and only seeking a, a utility in the other. So feminism is a massive projection of that. And so they, it uses women as well. Um, feminism is a extension of that self-serving nature, and so everything is a tool to feminism to promote an agenda of, well, basically making sure things are, you know, going well for, for women. Uh, more generally, but specifically for individual women, and making sure they keep their power and their level of comfort. If you suffer legitimately as a woman, make no mistake, the feminist will take advantage of that. She's not going to offer you uh, legitimate compassion. She will use you as a great example, or a uh, so-called example, in a, uh, an effort to, um, to produce more propaganda towards society at large for the uh, purpose of society-wide manipulation. So feminism, in many, many ways, is the epitome of that self-serving, manipulative uh, female nature. Uh, a nature that simply does not know legitimate compassion, at least towards the other. Uh, and in my, my observation, with, uh, as perhaps to the direct offspring, but uh, women Women generally don't know. Well, let me have a final example. You know, I've observed female behavior for quite some time in my 34 years on this earth. And uh, it, it's always funny that when, when a woman suffers, uh, the, the comfort she offers to her friend is not an attempt to alleviate the suffering or to understand what's going on. It's much more a sense of uh, egotism through commiseration. So I say, essentially, this idea that hmm, this happened to me too, you know, you need to look out for what's best for you, uh, and 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 it, it's a kind of twisted sense of egotistical empathy in a way. It's it's not legitimate empathy, and certainly not legitimate compassion. Um, it it really is this kind of 
this me syndrome, this me thinking. I don't want to get too far into that. This video is nearing its end. But yeah, this is this has been the natural reaction to uh, a toxic, malicious atmosphere brought about by feminism, accelerated uh, by women's behavior. Um, we, you know, we saw this. Uh, Barbara also posted a video a while back about men who weren't willing to just throw their lives away for the sake of so-called women and children on a sinking ship. Um, we're not going to do that anymore. Because we know you don't value it. We know you don't give a shit about it. We're not going to fucking throw our, our, our lives away just because you think that's the right thing to do. Um, you know, fact is, this is going to be a bit of a rant, it's probably never going to change, at least not in our lifetimes. We'll never be recognized as human beings. But one thing they cannot control is our reactions. And there will be consequences, even if it's on a small scale. So these women were angry at these men on the sinking ship for not giving, giving up their seats to the women. All I can say is more power to you guys. That, that's the right thing to do. Because as long as you have no humanity, um, quite frankly, I don't think you should see the other side as ha having too much humanity. You know, tit for tat. Um, that really is my position. Because I am not a human being in the eyes of uh, the vast majority of the world and certainly in the eyes of female kind. Um, I will not view them in that manner either. I mean, I will view them in more or less a manner of lacking humanity as well. I'm not going to go out of my way to be cruel, but uh, the days are long gone where uh, I put a woman's benefit before mine. Um, and, you know, all the stuff I've just talked about, that's pretty much the reason. Uh, you can decide that stuff for yourself. Uh, on a final note, um, this could well be the last video I make for quite some time. I've said that before, but there is a pressing reason. Mass Effect 3, and I know some of my viewers are gamers as well, has come out and will be coming out for me here in Germany on either the 8th or the 9th, and uh, I will be very preoccupied with trying to save the galaxy. In fact, no, I will save the galaxy. I'm a very thorough player. But <laughs> I have another channel, a video game channel, that I want to devote some attention to. I plan on making... Um, videos and, you know, creative videos involving music and what have you and cutscenes and uh, prob possibly if I can find the time strategy guide. So, whilst I still will be making videos on this channel, I don't think they'll be quite as frequent. Although, I don't know. It's all pretty random. But I can tell you one thing, that apart from work and maintaining some semblance of uh, a life routine, for these next couple of weeks, uh, having Mass Effect 3 around will be a very time consuming and thoroughly enjoying thing for me. So having said that, I hope you enjoyed this video and I really do appreciate all the support. I've, uh, I really feel every time someone tells me a little bit about their story and how this video I've made has helped them, I feel very encouraged. I feel very, uh, very motivated to continue what I have been doing because ultimately uh, I'm not in this for myself. I've never really cared about the number of subscribers I had, or even if I had any. I just thought if I had something to say, maybe it could be helpful to someone out there. Maybe it would make them think. And if I can help even just a few men out there with, uh, with, my, with my thoughts, with, with my videos, then I'm more than pleased, and I will, be, I will continue until I, uh, until I drop dead making videos. And uh, thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you soon.